everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. Today is Lamp Working 101.32. Anyway, oh my God, I was thinking about this the other night. This technique that I'm gonna show you guys is so amazing. And it's just reactions of colors. I wanna start experimenting with color and how they react with each other. And one of my favorite reactions is called spider webbing. And I just got this great, these two great colors that work together just incredibly for this. And I'm sure there's a lot more, but this is the one I'm going to show you guys. It's a base of dark ivory and a very special color, not a fetri. It is just little stringers of Hades. And I'll put Hades information right here so you can see it. But this color is so powerful. <laughs> I almost view it as a chaos color. And it produces the most insane bit of chaos between two colors of glass I've ever seen. It's just incredible. The more you tend to melt it in, the more it's going to almost start to rip itself apart because the softer color is trying to combine itself with this slightly stiffer color. Anyway, that's my thought on it. I could be completely wrong. Just make sure you just keep it to itself because if you get this mixed up with the black, you won't get any straight lines. You guys are the best as always. Keep those comments coming and I can't wait to see you all next time in the dungeon. Okay, here's our guest star for this show here. It is The Tabulator by Catwalk Tools. This was a great tool. I love this tool because it doesn't matter what shape you have. It even has registration pieces so you can make these three different widths and or you could take those little um, square pieces off and just have it free form. But basically, you're going to put it into position here. It's a little heavy, but we'll put it to the side and start our bead. I'm going to use the dark ivory to start my um, length. And I'm going to get this pretty long. I want this to be a large bead so I can get a nice pattern on it. And I'll just make it into a, a long tubular shaped bead to begin with. Now the spider webbing, that terminology is all I know for this technique. And I learned it in uh, when I was uh, in college doing the large studio glass blowing. And when we would put two powders on top of each other, one softer than the other, it would give you what we call spider webbing. It might be a different name in flame working, but that's what we're going to call it here. So I'm doing a full second wrap on this. This is, uh, this is going to be, this is going to look good. Now uh, we'll gently roll this out. I always want to have my pattern or the pattern of the bead, the silhouette, I should say, of the bead looking really nice before I get started with the pattern. And notice I take my flame down small. I know that this is large for a lot of people, but take your flame down small and start to use that stringer and just draw it using just the edge of your torch to the point where the stringer just barely melts. So you're really moving the bead and trying to keep the stringer right next to the flame as you feed it onto the glass. Yeah, that sounded like a pretty good explanation, eh? Now I'm going to finish this up by turning it around and putting the pattern on the other side. This works so well with very thin stringers, but as you can see just right there, this stringer is this stringer for me is thin i keep just breaking them because i manhandle like everything so uh, it 
it'll look amazing no matter what size stringer you have. Even if you just use it as dots right from the rod, you could try that as well. So here's where everything kind of comes together. Once you have that reactive glass on top of your base color, it's just a matter of time and patience and heating. And notice that I'm trying to heat everything very evenly, although I will heat certain areas up more than others. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I can see the color underneath starting to spread or spider web apart, like it's ripping apart. That's why I see this as like chaos magic, because every time you do this, it's different every time, but it still gives you this like chaotic effect. It's amazing. And you're gonna end up with something like this if you're doing a rounded bead. And I have it really sharp edges here and it's, it's really footballed out. It's really condensed in the middle. And I'm going to cover those thin edges up when I do my encasing. Sometimes I'm at such a loss for words, you guys. I'm sitting here thinking, what's the word? And I'm just gonna hold my rod very gentle here because I needed to change the temperature on my torch. So I just kind of let it settle down and now I can continue. I just love this pattern, you guys. It's so awesome. I almost wish I had done it on an orange or a, uh, a, a color color, but I thought this would be really nice because not only, you know, is it gonna look cool, but you can see the, the coloring differentiation in the heat. Did I just say that? Yeah, I did. You can see the colors coming out easier. Because you know how red, oh, okay, so um, here we go. I have my tabulator in place. I had to turn my torch off for the camera angle, but you can do this on the side. I just let go of the top and I gently press. Now you want to make sure your bead is not too soupy hot. Give it time, it has plenty of time. Then when you're done and you like what you have, and I do, I love this, I'm gonna turn my torch back on and give it a really nice fire polish all around. And we are done with our special effects spider webbed bead. Thanks for watching you guys. See you next time. <laughs>